Seven secrets from a craft fair host. If you're trying to make your way to your first 10K, hopefully this video gets you there faster. We have an amazing person on the show for you today. This girl runs her own craft show. She's been doing shows since she was 16 years old. She's got an incredible story to tell. I don't want to spoil it, but you guys are about to learn so much. This girl slays. She makes a ton of money doing this part time. Yeah, that's right. She does this part time because she's got a full time job. She's been helping people grow their business in the stud stack, but today she's sharing everything for you guys so you can make more money at your next craft fair. So let's get to it. Seven secrets about craft shows, craft fairs, flea markets, whatever you want to call them from a craft show organizer herself. No sponsor today. Our only ask is that if you enjoyed the video, send it to somebody you know who does craft shows. It'll really help them out. And we're gonna start with her story about how she started to make and sell things. So start us off, how did you get into making stuff? So when I was little, my mom did a lot of sewing and like needlepoint and cross stitch and all that. And so I do like the little kid versions of like cross stitch patterns and all. And I liked making things, right? Like stuff that I could keep later that I did by myself. And so as I got older, I started getting into like scrapbooking and I've made a couple like really, I think fancy, even though they don't look great scrapbooks. Um, and I found out, like I had heard about a cricket. I was like, oh man, that's gonna take me to another level, right? Cause I can cut things out that aren't just squares or rectangles anymore. <laughs> so I bought a cricket and I was like, man, I can make some really cool stuff with like, or for scrapbooking things, I can cut cool shapes and whatever. And so I got it, never used it for a scrapbook. I ended up uh, buying a bunch of vinyl and I was like, I can stick this on everything, right? So I started just cutting out random shapes and words and putting them on things. And I found some Facebook groups for it. And those people were then putting them on cups. And so I found like those glitter tumblers with the epoxy on them, mm -hmm. did them for a couple of years. And because of those groups, I started hearing people talk about like the Glowforge. I was like, there is no way I'm ever going to afford that, but it's cool looking. And so like what, two years or so after I first heard about a Glowforge, I ended up buying my machine off of Amazon and it's much bigger and better than a Glowforge. Not the best, but I'll take what I can get. And it has been a workhorse for the last like four years. So it's just kind of been like a progression of like one thing to the next. And then I started doing the woodworking because I needed to cut wood up to make things for the laser. like you know, to cut pieces of plywood down to size and all that kind of stuff. And now I've taken over a two car garage. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it crazy how fast that happens? You're like, I have this little hobby and now it's a two car garage and I can't possibly still fit all my stuff in there. It grows so fast. I love hearing everybody's story of like how they got into making because it never starts with like the big hobby. Yes. It never starts with like, oh, I wanted to be a woodworker or I wanted to like weld metal together. It's like, Oh, I used to take apart the remote control and like, oh, I used to like yeah. scrapbook or like I used to build sand cut. Like it's always something small that then just gets reinforced as we grow up, whether through good parenting or just our yeah. environment. I think the school system is starting to like celebrate creativity now more too. So it's, it's really cool to see a whole generation of people that have been encouraged to make stuff with their hands. So I, w I wanted to start with that. Let's dive into the, the deeper topic. How then did you decide like, what I make other people want to buy. How did you start selling mm -hmm. what it is that you were making? Um, I forced my mom to go to a craft show, like at the county fairgrounds. It was very small. I think I made like a hundred dollars, but the booth was only like 30. So I was super excited, big win for me. Yeah. My mom was not thrilled. <laughs> she was cold. It was kind of drizzly for half the day. Like she was like, oh, this is why I don't sell my stuff. I was like, well, we can just try again. It'll get better. It's gotta be better, right? So I usually make her come with me to like all of my shows now when she can. And she hates it every time she pushes through. <laughs> and how um, old were you when you did your first show? 16 or 17. Oh, it was wow. right around like high school. Yeah. Nice. That was with like cards and things like that. It was not anything that I ever would make now. Yeah. But which is probably why I made like a hundred bucks because who spends that much money on like thank you cards? But they were <laughs> cute. They just, you know, I couldn't sell them for more than like a dollar or two. Yeah going through all those things, I realized what I didn't like making and what I don't like doing. And I hate painting things. So I know for a fact, I will never do anything if it can't be spray painted a solid color, it's not going to happen. And so when I started doing like the laser stuff and I got more into like selling things and doing craft shows, like constantly for a couple of years with it, um, I, I like doing tumblers. I think they're cool. And they were really a hot seller for a while for me. The coasters that I do now, 
That's like my biggest seller because they're quick and they're cheap. I sell them for like 10 bucks for a set of four of them and people can pick whichever ones they want. So over the years, I've figured out kind of what shape and what material and stuff people prefer over the others, which is nice. Um, cutting boards, I'm still working on getting into. Like I have, I do those recipe cutting boards where people will give me like their family recipe and I put that on there, but I use oh, pre-made cool. boards for those just so I can knock them out. Yeah. But those are like the main things. And then Christmas ornaments during like the fall and Christmas time, which those are my favorite, but you know, the cutting boards and the tumblers, that's where I make my money. So. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Alex, one of the things I love about you most is you're able to so quickly bounce back and forth between what you like making and knowing what the customers will mm -hmm. and won't buy. That's something that Jenny and I have really struggled with. At least I've struggled with it. I don't know if you have. Neither of us are like experts at it by any means. So how do you, Alex, then how do you gauge the balance between like, ah, I don't like making this, but it makes a lot of money. Like how, where do you draw the line for that? Yeah, especially at the craft fairs, because I feel like a lot of your expertise is very like craft fair oriented. Yeah, there's a, when you do a lot of shows, there's a very balance between knowing what people want and not doing things that you hate doing. Like the glitter tumblers, I, for a while, I really loved doing them. And then I decided like, I can't do this anymore. They take way too long to make one. And I hate hearing all the people tell me this is too expensive. Will you take half the price for it? Like one of the things is like when I get feedback like that from people and they're not willing to pay for my time that it takes to put, you know, one of these things together. I'm, I'm done with it. Like I'll find something else to replace it that I like doing just as much that will also make me money. The more shows you do, the more you pick up on those like little comments that you hear from people. Like sometimes somebody will say something you're like, oh, okay, that was one person. But over the course of like 10 shows in a year, if you hear the same thing, it's either gets so discouraging that you're just like, I'm done with this. I'll find something else. Or, you know, you hear great things. You're like, great, I'm going to keep going, but I got to make find a way to make it better so I can get more money out of it, you know, that perceived value. Yeah, it sounds like this, the answer is just to talk to more people, right? Yeah. You got to know what the people want or what they're what they're saying, because like you said, at the beginning, people were happy to, to pay for the glitter tumblers. And then towards the end, when the market got so saturated, um, everybody's expectations got higher and the prices got lower and you weren't able to, to find any sort of uh, profit in between, right? And I would assume too that you, um, find success in being able to like switch between different products because you've been able to wait it out. Like has the whole process of learning what works taken like a little bit longer than you thought it might? Cause like everything I'm hearing you say is you're really good about making changes and then waiting and making changes and waiting. When I don't do this full time, so it's not as big of a deal if I have to wait around a little bit. Like you know, this is not my money maker. I still go to my normal like 40 hour work a week job. This pays for the fun things that I want to buy, like new tools and stuff like that. So if I'm not constantly making things, it's not like I don't, it's not like I have to keep selling stuff over and over again to keep up with like my lifestyle, I guess. So it makes it a lot easier to just wait it out. You know, a week goes by a lot quicker, you know, when I, I can take a break and not have to think about it. And then all of a sudden I've got another show and I get the same or different feedback. And then I can kind of like gauge things from there. You guys are in for a treat because you're listening to Alex talk about her business and everything in hindsight. Um, she's also being super humble because that's just the kind of person she is. Make no mistake, this girl hustles. Yes. <laughs> she she works super, super hard, does shows year round. She's always working on something. I, I know mm -hmm. she's, she's saying, oh, I take breaks and I take it slow, but I, she is like, pushing really hard all the time and loving every second of it. And I think that's super important. Um, Alex also runs her own show. So do you want to talk a little bit about that, about what it's like on the other side of like organizing one of these shows? Um, so one of the things that made me decide like exactly what I wanted to sell and like really narrow it down was in 2021, I did my first show. So I do it over at the fairgrounds that are like 10 minutes up the street from my house, which is awesome. Um, and when I started getting applications for that, I realized just how irritating it is as like a show host, when somebody says, oh, I really want to be in your show. Where's the application? You're like, oh, I love this person. Their energy is great. You give them the application. And when you get it back, all of a sudden 
you see this list of like a thousand things because they make keychains, they do epoxy things, they do you know wood stuff, they make signs and they glitter shoes and like also jewelry. Everyone does jewelry. And I'm not knocking <laughs> any of those things because all of them are great, but it's just very hard to place you mm -hmm. in a show when you do a little bit of everything mm -hmm. next to somebody who doesn't do what you do. Oh. And one of my like, my biggest goal with my show is that I don't want it. I want it to fix all of the problems that I've had at other shows. I don't want it to be like all the other ones where everybody leaves saying, you know, oh, the spaces were actually nine by nine instead of 10 by 10, or they didn't advertise at all and nobody showed up or whatever, or mm. I was put next to somebody that does the exact same thing as me. Mm. And so I spend hours doing my like floor plan to make sure that people, I it's like color coded and all kinds of crazy stuff to make sure that people are so far away from anyone that does anything even similar to them. So by doing that, I realized I don't want to be that person that causes the problem for somebody else. So if you're on the fence about doing something, try and just narrow your stuff down instead of doing more things. Cause it's going to end up getting you into more shows and getting a better spot. If you don't do a little bit of everything. But anyway, so I do my show. Um, it's the first weekend of December at the fairgrounds here. And it's, I think I'm up to 54 vendors now. Wow. wow. Two of them are not handmade. Everything else is. Those two, when they finally decide to leave, I will not have like direct salespeople come back, but both of them have been there since the very beginning hmm. and they've never missed one of my shows. Mm -hmm. um, and they've also been huge helps in like finding people and stuff for me at that first show. So it was like, you all can stick around, it's fine. <laughs> um, but I have pictures with Santa this year Ooh. where um, one, of my, yeah, one of my vendors is a, like a nonprofit for Alaskan Malamutes, okay. like the dog. It looks kind of like a huskyish, fluffy thing. Yeah. They're adorable. The lady that's in charge of it is going to have one of her friends that does a, like pictures with Santa every year. She's going to come set up so I don't have to use my not so great looking backdrop. She has a nice one. And they're going to bring a couple of the dogs. So that way people can take pictures of them for a few hours in the middle of Saturday and Sunday. This year it will be two days too, which I'm excited and terrified about. <laughs> Cause normally it's just one day and that one's gone well, but I don't know. I feel like two days is a lot. So we will see. <laughs> well, that's a big but, show. Yeah. 50, you said 53 vendors? 54. 54. I think it's 54. Jeez. Plus I've got three food trucks. Oh my nice. Gosh. Yeah, so yeah. you know, One just a little, just a little craft fair, yeah. you know, not a big deal or anything. That's awesome. And how many years have you done it? So this is the third year. So I did it twenty one and twenty two. Plus, I did a spring show in twenty two. So this is my fourth show, but the third winter one. So you started a show in twenty twenty one, and it's just grown right all the way through while everybody else is closing down shows. And man, that's that's incredible, Alex. That's that's really cool. And my return vendor rate is like 86 percent wow from that's last awesome year. so you know they're making I think money I got from other people i've even got people that are going to set up outside just so they can be there i was like wow i mean that's fine i'll give you a discounted price because it's going to be cold but <laughs> wow <laughs> that sounds like you run a really great show um yeah i would love to come someday that would be so much i know <laughs> that would be so great you can stay with us i just built a, a guest bed oh my gosh <laughs> yes <laughs> i love so having much. makers as friends <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, so quick background on how we know Alex. We we met her in, well, in, we met her in the morning show back when we used to yeah. do the morning show, but she quickly signed up for the stud stack and we just became, I don't know, instant friends. Um, we just, we get along really well. We see things relatively the same way mm -hmm. and we both have a, an enormous amount of respect for other makers who make and sell things. It was very apparent when uh, when Alex got in the group that she was there to help people yes. as well as grow her own business. And that's exactly who um, we enjoy making friends with. And so this is not a stud stack plug. I just want I just wanted everybody to know where we where we mm -hmm. met each other from. And um, on that note, we've been teasing some new content for the members of the stud stack. We've been trying it out before we release it to YouTube. So it's as good as it can be. And it, we cover four different areas now. So we've decided that there's four different areas of a business. Mm -hmm. um, and if any one of them isn't working, your whole business is gonna come to a halt. And the only hard part is, is you may not know which part is struggling at the moment. So the first one is uh, what product you have. 
The second one is promoting your product for sale. Uh, the third one is finding an efficient way to create your product and give it to the customer. And then the fourth one is taking care of the people in your business. Usually that's us as the makers, but if you have employees, those count too. So those are the four areas. Which one do you think you're best at? I am best at taking naps when I need a nap. I'm good at just like not working when it's time to not work, when I feel like I'm getting overwhelmed with life in general, not just like laser work, but any kind of anything. Got it. So you're really good at the like taking care of people part. So you've kind of mastered like taking care of yourself so you don't get burnt out, which is really cool because that's one we struggle with. So like, oh my gosh, we have so much to learn from you and we envy you because that's the one that's like the most difficult for us. Um, which one would you say you're like always working toward improving? The promoting one. I'm like, I'm really good when I talk to people and they ask me like, oh, how's your business going? Or how's Hell Yellow or whatever. I'm just like, oh, it's great. Let me tell you about all these things, right? But making that conversation happen, like I remember in some video you guys did forever ago, you were like, whenever you get the chance to say hi to somebody, tell them, oh, I started a business. Let me tell you all about it, you know? And I've tried that a few times and it makes me feel so weird, <laughs> even though I'm not like telling them you need to buy my product. But there's just something about like talking about myself in that capacity where I just feel really like just strange. <laughs> so I'm still working on it, but it's gotten better. Yeah, I mean, clearly you're. you're building a craft show that tons of people are clawing over each other to right. sign up for again. So clearly they're making money. How do you promote that show? Ooh, good question. As much as people hate say, like the answer of, oh, I promote it on social media, that's like the majority of what I do because it reaches so many people so fast and for so little money. Like I definitely mm -hmm. spend money on paid ads to make sure that it gets out there to people that are not directly related to like my page. Mm -hmm. But it's people get really irritated about it, but it's like the best way to do things. I do take flyers um, to all the other shows I do in the fall leading up to it. And I send out a ton of like marketing materials and stuff that all of my vendors can use. So it, everything is very cohesive. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a Facebook event banner in case they make their own event. And, you know, I send them the flyer that I take to all the events that I do so they can print it out and post it or, you know, take a stack with them for people to take. So that helps get the word out too. And I have, um, have an in with the local radio station around here, which is very helpful. Nice. nice. <laughs> well, I, I think that's the most powerful way to promote. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can get your people, get other people talking about what it is that you do, that's, that's gold. Well, that's why it's like, on Instagram and Facebook, one of the most valuable things somebody can do for you is to share your post or like bookmark it or put it in their story because yeah, you know, it's good to talk about yourself and say, hey, this is my product, this is why it's great. But if it's coming from somebody else who took the time to share it, it's like, whoa, more people think this is fantastic than just them. So I know people say like, oh yeah, okay, well, whatever, that's a free way to share it. But there's some pretty stinking good free ways. Yeah. And I love that you have a cohesive set of, I'm assuming, colors and images that mm -hmm. you hand to everybody that wants to make graphics for it. That's so valuable. I can't tell you the number of times I've seen an event on Facebook and then I go to Instagram and it's the same event, but it looks like two totally different events because people aren't talking about it the same way. They're not using the same words mm -hmm. to announce the event. Um, so it's really cool that you provide that to your vendors, knowing that make, giving, giving, them, giving them something easier to share. Yes. They don't do any work. One of the things that I have a problem with, and like I fully admit this, is that other shows that I do, I totally forget to put them on Facebook as an event for like my own page. Um, and so if somebody were to give me these things and I could just like plug in the information real quick and hit go, I would probably add them. But other than my show, I've never done a show where anybody has given me any materials to do or like to use. And so I have to go on their page and I have to copy and paste all these things. And it might take like two or three minutes, but that's two or three minutes that I think I have to do something else or I'm at work and I need to pretend to be doing actual work. So, you know, it, like I don't think to go back and do that later. And then all of a sudden the show is two days from now. And I'm like, there's no point. You know, and usually their graphics are not that great looking anyway. <laughs> so if I do do it, I'll make my own to make it look a little more exciting. But then, like you said, it doesn't really match. 
I try to keep it similar, but it doesn't match what they do. So people might see the same event and think it's two totally different things. Well, it's crazy now with, with like tools like Canva, if you've ever seen that tool, like oh, yeah. it's so simple to make a high quality graphic. No, it's not gonna be perfect your first try, but man, it's so easy to make cohesive graphics now. It, and um, I think it's a way that you can set yourself apart um, and Potentially, I mean, I don't know about you, but like, would you waive a booth fee if you knew a particular vendor was going to bring a thousand people to the show if they had a big audience? Yes. Yeah, so like those of us that are trying to do shows and um, stuff like that, you can really have a competitive advantage if you're bringing, if you're the one bringing yeah. people to the show from your from your socials. Yeah. So if you are the person that's bringing that many people, make sure to be friends with the host because that's going to get you so far like i don't pick favorites or whatever by any means like i place people based on the different things that they do mm -hmm. right you know one guy told me that he was guaranteed he was going to spend 500 dollars in like marketing like facebook and instagram ads and all and i was like dude if, are you like for serious because if you are i can get you by the door wow. like if that's your only request because you sell candles and they're super heavy i will put you by a door you know, no questions asked. I'll figure things out around you because if you're doing that much for the show to help me out, I can help you out with placement a little bit. You that's know? cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I just feel like you have so much expertise in the craft show sector and you've had so much experience, not only as like a seller, but somebody who's setting up the show. So you have knowledge on both sides. And I think that's really cool because not everybody has that experience, but I also don't want to brush past like just how much work that is. Like that is so much work to not only run your business on like the front end, but the back end by running the show too. So like it is so much work. So who, who I guess encourages you or helps like keep you going and I guess encourages you to like keep running your business. My mom. As much as she hates going to shows with me, she puts this one on her calendar every year and she will be there. My dad is there. Um, Dan, my fiance, he goes begrudgingly. <laughs> so usually he ends up having to work and then he goes home, changes and comes over for the last like hour or two of it. And I feel a little bad because, you know, he's probably tired, but whatever. <laughs> so at least this time he's got two whole days can find a little bit of time to come hang out in between his work because he does have to work both days. Yeah. Um, and then his parents, his mom thinks I'm like super famous, I guess. <laughs> like that's how she acts when she walks around the show. She's like, oh, are you enjoying yourself? <laughs> My future daughter-in-law is the one that runs the whole thing. And like, oh, <laughs> I love that you love this so much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is so sweet. That's oh great. my gosh. That's so cool that you Your have so much. Your vendors are super helpful too. Yeah. You know, they're like just super excited every year to sign up immediately. You know, they're asking me in like February, when's the application coming out? I'm like, wow. okay, hold on. I need to take like a very long break from this. <laughs> You'll get it in like, or April, I think is when I sent them out this year for the returning people. But even like the vendors that want to come back are super encouraging because I guess they do really well. I, I put on like blinders and I'm just like fix any problems that happen immediately. So. I don't know. My dad tells me how many people he thinks shows up and you know, my mom's like, Oh, I'm busy nonstop. And I'm just like, I don't know what happened the whole day. I, I have no memory of it, but everyone keeps telling me how great it is. And they keep asking me when they can sign up for next year. So something good must have happened. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. Clearly. That's awesome. That's great that you have so much support. Um, yeah. would you agree with the statement that running a business is lonely? It has its moments. Mm -hmm. very much enjoy being alone. So I am not as lonely as some other people might be because I like it. Um, mm -hmm. But I definitely have times where I'm like, Dan, you want to just come sit out in the garage with me? Oh. Like we can watch a movie on the TV over there while I do things. And he doesn't because usually it's like really hot or really cold out here. <laughs> but I'm very good at that balance between mm -hmm. doing things. And then when I hit that, like, there's like a mental wall that all of a sudden I just hit and I'm like, I think I'm bored or I think I'm irritated. I'm going to leave now. And I just turn the thing off and walk away. <laughs> That's so, so that is I such a good skill. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's Sometimes so I wish I could just push through it. Like Christmas time when it gets that busy, you know, I'm like, I really need to do these things, but I am just not in the mood for it. You know, and sometimes it takes me two or three days to get back in the mood. So that's not so great. 
but the yeah. rest of the year, it's a pretty even balance. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the benefits of having your own business and, and selling what you make is, you know, if you're not feeling it, you can yeah. just tap out and that's okay. It's okay to do that. You need yeah. to do that. Um, but if you're doing that, you know, four or five times a week, maybe we got to reevaluate uh, <laughs> uh, how much fun you're having. But I think that that's a, an important balance that I think each of us should learn. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really appreciate listening to you talk about it. Um, I, I know for me, I've got some stuff to do. I, I know I'm going to start to reevaluate, just check in with myself throughout the day to see how I'm doing. Yeah. Um, instead of just going on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing until I'm burned out. So, right. Um, instead of saying, oh, I think I might be tired. Maybe we should take a break. I feel like sometimes it's, I'm tired. That's rough. Let's keep <laughs> going, <laughs> you know, and just knowing when to take breaks and when to push through. So this next question is, uh, hopefully for the people watching that are thinking about getting into a business, curious about it, maybe they've watched a few videos about it and they're just not sure if they should jump in. Um, I guess the question I'm asking you now, Alex, is do you think it's all been worth it from the time that you did your first show to where you are now and where you want to go? Would you say that the whole experience has been worth it? I think so. Tell me more. Like, there were definitely moments <laughs> where I was like, I really just don't want to do this anymore, but I really like making things. And those moments where like, usually it happens in the spring or like early, early, like beginning of the year, you know, after the Christmas rush is over mm -hmm. and you're just like, Oh my God, that was awful. Great, but awful. And you start to realize how nice it is to not have like super tight deadlines like you did right before Christmas and worrying about shipping and things getting to places by Christmas and all like, that January, February time, almost every year, I'm like, is it really worth it to keep going? And so I sit around for a little while and I'm like, oh, I need to make something. You know, like, this is just, this is what I do. This is who I am. I make stuff. And so I need to like glue things together or cut stuff up or paint things with spray paint, not regular <laughs> paint. And like, so I, I think about it every year pretty much. Like, is it worth it? And then by the time spring starts to happen again, because my garage is not heated or like air conditioned. Mm -hmm. So that plays a big factor. And if I want to even be out here, but by the time it starts to get nice out and like, oh, OK, I don't mind being out here again. Like, let's go clean up the garage and start over this year. So, yes, it's it's worth it. It has its moments where I'm iffy, but overall. I mean, what am I going to do with all these things if I made a hundred ornaments because I like making ornaments? I do not need a hundred ornaments. I need a hundred trees at this point. Hold them all. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. That I, that's an interesting point. I didn't think of it that way. Like when you run a business, like you get to make more. I know it mm -hmm. sounds kind of obvious and silly. Like well, duh. But like. No, you get to make more when you're making it for somebody else. You can disperse it. Like you can make more, you can make 80 ornaments because you can get rid of 80 ornaments and then have the money to buy more material materials so you can just sit here and make more ornaments. And you can know there are more people enjoying what they have because yeah. I was able to make it. And I don't know, for me that like that that does it for me. Yeah. That's the sauce for me is when I know that somebody is going to sleep really enjoying the new table that they have or the new cutting board that they got in the mail, like that's that's it for me. Just knowing I made somebody happy with, with what I could do with my, my two hands. It's a nice feeling leaving a show knowing that like so many people just had giant smiles on their faces or one lady last year, I had a pet memorial ornament, which is like a really sad thing. Mm -hmm. And I hate talking to people about it usually because they're so sad <laughs> and I'm trying to make them feel better but like there's only so much I can say and this one lady walked up and she goes oh my god my dog just died two weeks ago and she's like telling me how upsetting this is and I was like I don't know how to help you and then she tells me I'm going to take this ornament right off the tree that was my dog's name because I happened to pick a very popular dog name mm -hmm. on purpose um but she was like this is the most amazing thing it was like it was meant to be and all of a sudden she went from like on the verge of full on crying to just like the happiest person. And she had her husband come over and he was like, oh, this is amazing. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. I just like fixed your day. How oh. are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So it's so nice. Yeah, if that doesn't do it for you, pack it up. I know. You don't deserve a business. Oh. <laughs> That's the cool kind of stuff we get to do. I um, would almost be in tears. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
Yeah, that that stuff is is so exciting. Um, yeah, and it's so much work, but that sort of payoff, like, oh my gosh, makes it so worth it. There's other parts that are like hard, and they don't get easier, like all the behind the scenes stuff, like the accounting and mm -hmm. taxes. And I try really hard every year to figure out inventory. I'm sure that it's wrong, but I'm putting in all the effort that I can, <laughs> you know. But yeah, you know, all that kind of stuff. That also is rough. You know, and does not help the worth it aspect, but you get through it. You know, you can't do the fun stuff without some of the annoying things. Yeah, I, I think it's, that's something that like is not talked about enough, I think in this space. Um, mm -hmm. We've tried to like talk about it loudly over the years, but uh, a lot of people just want to chase the money or, sh you know, show the thumbnail of them making a million dollars or whatever, but it really is tough. Um, mm -hmm. Michelangelo, the famous artist, sculptor, you know, that Michelangelo. Yes. <laughs> um, he said, if you knew how much work went into my art, you wouldn't think it was that impressive. And I, I that sort of hit me hard the other day when I heard that and I was just thinking like, man, like, that's so true. Like we, we, we point to our accomplishments in business or the mm -hmm. things that we make. And we're, it, it, we see this all the time. Like when you finish a project, you're like, oh, that could be better. That could be better. I could spend yep. more time on that. And it's like, hey, dude, it's okay. It's beautiful. And, and our friends and family are trying to tell us that what we make is good enough. But all we see are the imperfections and the work that we put into it. Right. Um, but I think there's something to be said of like, we, we need to address the fact that you're like, yeah, it is hard. But you know what? It is worth it. All right, so there's somebody out there watching this video right now that's thinking about starting a business. Um, Alex, on the spot, <laughs> what would you say to encourage them to take the leap, to sign up for a craft show, to ask their friends and family, make a Facebook post about the fact that they're trying to sell what they make now? What would you say to encourage that person that's on the fence? Just do it. <laughs> like, I put it off for so long once I actually made a Facebook page, I was like, oh, God, I don't want people to know me, to know about this. How embarrassing. But like, why was that embarrassing? I don't know. It's not like I was pushing product on them or anything like that. It shouldn't have been a big deal. So I would say just do it. Get that first post over with where you share like your business page on your personal page. And if people like it, they like it. And if they don't, you know, then whatever. They might find it again later and decide later that they like it. Um, sign up for a craft show. My first one, I had like really terrible uh, dollar store tablecloths and a couple little like crates to kind of lift things because I read somewhere on a Facebook group that you should, you know, raise stuff up to eye level. And it didn't look good by any means, but I still sold my hundred dollars worth of stuff, which I thought was really exciting. So yeah, yeah, it is. do what you can with the little bit of money that you have to put into it, assuming you only have a little bit of money. Um, and just see how it goes. Like, see if you like interacting with people. That's a big thing with craft shows is you can tell when people are there because they're just trying to make money, but they don't want to deal with you until you're ready to hand them cash, you know, and see if you're one of those people, which is fine if you are, but maybe a website is more for you. Or if you like in-person stuff and you like just talking to people and hearing those stories like the dog lady and all, you know, and I feel like you're not going to necessarily know that until you're in that setting with a bunch of strangers talking to you. Some people are just better at it than others are, but you don't know until you try. A hundred percent. Yes. You don't know until you try. Yep. And just, yeah, stop overthinking it sometimes. I know it sounds like such an easy answer, like, oh, just do it. But it truly is because we build it up to be such a big thing and we overthink all the time. Um, and so sometimes you just gotta take the leap. Yeah, man, I know this has been such an enlightening conversation yes. just for us, but I know it's been for those watching too. Um, Alex, where can people follow you to get more information about what it is that you do? Um, all of my things, handles, whatever they're called, clearly I'm not good at this social media part, um, are, it's Hello Yellow Customs, all one word. Um, my website that is not so great right now is Hello Yellow Customs, Dot com. Um, my email, if anybody wants to email me, is helloyellowcustoms.com or at gmail.com if you've got questions. Um, I will attempt to answer them. I can't guarantee it's going to be a great answer, but I will definitely try. <laughs> you are so great. Thank you so much. Um, I just like everybody just has to know. Um, 
she is such a light and such a huge help to like everybody in the stud stack. Like the advice you heard here, like she is just always so willing to share like that, which is so great. And I know that's a lot of the reason that her like business has taken off and she's succeeded so much in craft shows just for her like love of, I don't know, she's just good at the people part. Like she's just good with people and she loves sharing. So thank you so, so much. We appreciate you being here, Alex. And um, we are so beyond excited for you. Like we just love hearing the next thing. Like, you know, the craft show's coming up next year and I'm gonna tweak this and I got even more vendors and it just makes our whole day. So thank you for sharing a little piece of yourself with everybody today. Um, I know everybody had to have learned so much and if you didn't like literally rewind and watch it over again because I know for a fact that there is like really good stuff that you can take from this video. I'm gonna go back and watch it. I don't know I what know. you like. <laughs> Man, I know I missed a lot of really good nuggets in there. So anyway, just uh, drop a comment down below. Tell Alex a big, big thank you for doing this. Yes. Um, I just contacted her out of the blue and said like, hey, you're doing this. <laughs> and she, she said that was a great idea. So um, anyway, thanks so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.